Ukraine has just publicly revealed one of its most closely held defense secrets, a domestically developed long-range cruise missile designed to strike targets deep inside Russian territory. Known as the FP-5 Flamingo, this missile is the latest addition to Ukraine's growing portfolio of standoff precision weapons. Its existence had been suspected for months, but new footage and government statements now confirm that Flamingo is real and, according to Kyiv, operational. So, in today's video, we're taking a closer look at Ukraine's Flamingo cruise missile, how it was developed, what it's designed to do, and what its appearance means for the broader dynamics of the war. Let's dive in. The Flamingo project was developed under extraordinary secrecy by Firepoint, a private Ukrainian defense firm with limited official acknowledgement until the summer of 2025. Ukrainian sources had hinted at a new long-range strike capability earlier in the year, but confirmation only came in August when footage of Flamingo testing and claims of combat use appeared on official channels. Development accelerated after 2022 amid policy limits on some Western long-range systems, especially Germany's refusal to transfer Taurus and earlier U.S. caveats around Atakum's use. Those constraints pushed Kyiv to invest in indigenous alternatives. Flamingo appears to be the result of that investment. Firepoint also develops other strike systems, but the full subcontractor list for Flamingo has not been made public. As of September 20, 25, Ukraine claims Flamingo has already been used in operational strikes against Russian targets, including long-range attacks in Crimea and Russia's border regions. Ukrainian officials say the missile is still being refined, but its performance in early missions has already exceeded expectations. While most specifications remain classified, available imagery and open-source analysis provide several clues. The Flamingo is a ground-launched cruise missile. Publicly released video and photos show rail or trailer-based launchers, and there is no authoritative evidence of aircraft carriage. The International Institute for Strategic Studies assesses that the missile is powered by an Ivchenko AI-25TL turbofan, a repurposed aircraft engine whose size and efficiency help explain the relatively large fuselage and the endurance Ukraine claims for the system. Ukraine has described satellite navigation as the guidance method. Open sources infer that inertial updates are likely, but additional details on mid-course or terminal guidance have not been released. On performance, Firepoint's stated figures, also reported by the IISS, indicate a range of up to about 3,000 kilometers and a warhead mass around 1,150 kilograms, reportedly adapted from an aerial bomb. IISS notes that these values originate with the manufacturer and have not been independently verified. If borne out, that range would place Flamingo among the longest-ranged conventionally armed cruise missiles in Europe. Externally, the airframe appears to favor robust construction and low-level routing to reduce exposure to radar rather than advanced stealth shaping. In practice, survivability will depend on route planning altitude management, electronic warfare conditions, and how Russian air defenses adapt, not on signature reduction alone. Flamingo arrives at a moment when Ukraine is seeking ways to strike beyond the front lines and disrupt Russia's logistics, air operations, and command and control in depth. After nearly three years of high-intensity war, Sustaining pressure on air bases, depots, and critical infrastructure far from the battlefield has become central to Kyiv's strategy. Western partners have supplied a wide range of weapons, but policy limits have at times constrained how and where certain systems can be used. Germany, in particular, has declined to transfer Taurus cruise missiles on escalation grounds. A domestically built, ground-launched cruise missile gives Ukraine more freedom to plan and execute deep strike missions without donor permissions and with fewer political caveats. 
Even before mass production is proven, the credible prospect of long-range conventional strikes forces Russia to adapt, dispersing assets, hardening facilities, shifting air defense coverage, and allocating more resources to rear area protection. Used alongside Ukraine's other long-range and uncrewed systems, Flamingo can help create compounded effects by widening the set of targets at risk and complicating Russian planning cycles. The strategic value will ultimately hinge on practical factors, how many missiles Ukraine can build, how reliably they perform, and how quickly Russia adjusts its defenses. There are also escalation and diplomatic considerations. Partners will watch closely how the system is employed. But if Ukraine sustains production and effective employment, Flamingo has the potential to extend the geographic depth of Ukrainian strikes and add a measure of operational independence to Kyiv's long-range campaign. Despite its promise, Flamingo faces practical limits that will determine its real impact. Ukraine has not demonstrated public evidence of sustained, high-rate production and wartime supply chains for engines, guidance electronics, energetic materials, and precision machining remain under pressure until Ukraine proves it can build missiles in meaningful monthly numbers and support the requisite launchers, crews, and reload logistics, Flamingo will likely be used selectively for high-value, fixed targets rather than as a routine battlefield munition. Operational reliability and accuracy also remain unproven in open sources. Cruise missiles are sensitive to navigation disruptions and electronic warfare. Russia fields persistent GNSS jamming and spoofing, along with dense, layered air defenses around strategic sites. Low-level routing can reduce exposure, but survival will hinge on route planning, timing, deconfliction with other assets, and how quickly Russian forces adapt engagement zones and sensor coverage in response to Flamingo's employment. There is a governance and oversight dimension as well. The manufacturer has been named in a Ukrainian anti-corruption investigation. The company denies wrongdoing, and no court findings have been announced. The probe does not, by itself, undercut technical claims, but it underscores the tension between rapid wartime procurement and the need for transparent contracting, quality assurance, and export control compliance for dual-use components. Finally, political risk and escalation management will shape how Flamingo is used. Partners are watching closely. Deep strikes that generate limited military effect but high political cost could complicate support. Conversely, disciplined targeting with demonstrable operational payoff will strengthen the case for continued assistance. In short, Flamingo's value will be determined less by headline specifications than by production tempo reliability in contested conditions, and the strategic judgment with which it is employed. Flamingo extends the geographic depth of Ukraine's strike options and raises Russia's cost of defense by forcing dispersion, hardening, and wider air defense coverage across the rear. Its real value will hinge on production tempo, performance under electronic warfare, and disciplined target selection. Steady employment against nodes that degrade combat power for weeks can shift the campaign. Sporadic shots will not. There is also an industrial signal. Fielding a domestically built long-range cruise missile under wartime conditions accelerates skills in engines, guidance, energetics, and systems integration, provided governance keeps pace. Diplomatically, Judicious, effect-driven use can reinforce allied support and deterrence. Indiscriminate use risks political blowback. In short, Flamingo will matter to the extent Ukraine can produce it consistently and employ it smartly faster than Russia adapts. But what do you think? Can Ukraine's Flamingo missile truly shift the balance in deep strike capabilities? Let us know in the comments below. And if you found this video insightful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest defense news and analysis.